Well, it's a great honor to be here as a storyteller. Uh, guess what? I don't have a PowerPoint. <laughs> Wow, I didn't expect that. So you can use your internal screens if you want to close your eyes. Um, there's all, all these other ways to uh, take in information. I'm not providing information. I'm hopefully providing inspiration through history. I just wanted to narrow my focus a little bit on um, protection efforts for the sequoia sempervirin and value and search for value along the Eel River watershed. Okay. My first story is uh, about Martella Cone Lane. Martella Cone Lane was a painter, and she was born and raised in Iowa and then went to Nebraska for her college degree in art. And then she married and moved to the sunny town of Fortuna in 1899. Okay, there, with her art degree, she taught painting at the Fortuna High School, and she taught painting privately. And her specialty were still lives and portraits. But just a short walk from her home, she discovered an ancient redwood grove. And it changed her life forever. Uh, she wrote, to enter a redwood forest is like entering the portals of a great cathedral. Lofty, dim, pillared, and peaceful. One's soul is inspired to its greatest capacity. Martella Cone Lane was a spiritual woman who found even greater depths in our redwood forests. So she decided she needed to paint them. And prior to that time, there was very few people that actually took on redwood groves as a painting subject matter because they were huge. How do you fit them on a canvas? And they were dark. But Martella Cone Lane wanted to capture the light as it beamed through and threaded through the trees. And she wanted to somehow express the depth of experience that she found in their presence. So she started painting redwoods. And in 1912, she entered several of them in the California State Fair. And she was an overnight sensation. Her painting sold uh, really fast. And then she got commissions to paint more. So she decided to turn all her energy towards painting redwoods. That was that, 1912. And um, pretty soon, every public office of consequence in the state of California wanted a Martella Cone Lane, um, or they already purchased one. And she started to exhibit across the country, in Chicago, and Denver, and Philadelphia, and Los Angeles. Uh, in 1915, she created a huge painting, almost floor to ceiling in some buildings, of a trail going through a redwood grove that she entered in the World's Fair in San Francisco. Now, ironically, as she traveled to exhibit her paintings, she was also witness to their decline. And so when she saw time and time again vast hillsides just completely clear cut with smoldering stumps left, in this desolate landscape, she decided she needed to preserve what was one of her most cherished things in life, which were some ancient redwood forests or the groves before they were all cut down. So in 1920, she joined the Humboldt County Save the Redwoods League chapter, which was only two years after the Save the Redwoods League organization started and a year after the Humboldt County chapter started. And if you guys were at um, Jerry Rohde's presentation, you'll know that it was the women of Humboldt County that started the Save the Redwoods League chapter. And there's very little really written about them, but they're a pretty amazing group. So Martella Cone Lane, uh, after achieving notoriety as a painter, was a sought after speaker. And so she would go to church groups and to chambers groups and to women's groups to try and get people to donate money for the preservation of these ancient forests. And within a year, the first Save the Redwoods League ancient forest in the Eel River watershed on the South Fork of the Eel was preserved. And of course, since then, as many of you know, um, over 100,000 acres of ancient forest groves have been preserved. 
So Martella Cone Lane was able to help in the protection efforts of one of her most cherished things. And I want to urge you all to go and see two of her paintings, because they're here in Humboldt County. That almost Florida ceiling painting um, is at the Humboldt County Courthouse. If you go in through the doors, it's on the north side of the wall. And then she has a smaller one also on the north side of the wall. And they're really quite amazing. So next time you're in the Humboldt County Courthouse, for whatever reason, <laughs> do check out those paintings. Um, now staying with the eel, uh, there was a, another woman in the Humboldt County Redwoods chapter of Save the Redwoods League. Um, her name was Laura Perot Mahon, and she is actually known now as the first Redwoods protester. So Pacific Lumber Company had set aside some acres in the Dyerville area that um, they promised to save for conservation money to be purchased, and uh, Laura found out that um, they were, there were some sawyers there that were cutting them down to um, make their quota. Well. Okay, this is 1923. She found out in Eureka, was able to go all the way down to Dyerville and stand in front of the tree that they're still trying to cut down, and she saved it. And so those, those trees actually became part of the Rockefeller Forest. Um, that was just a little known first tree activist in the Humboldt County. Um, so diverting from my female gender, I'm going to go to um, um, Don McClellan in 1959 actually was a skilled tree climber and he stumbled upon the redwoods between San Francisco and Washington one time and decided, oh, God, this is amazing. So he took up residence in the goose pen of an old growth redwood tree and he decided that the, oh, my God, feeling that he felt had to be brought to the attention of the world in order to have world peace. So with his tree climbing skills, he climbed one of the trees and flew the American flag and then wrote letter after letter after letter to our world leaders in the United States, but also to other world leaders to try and bring them together at this grove, which was right outside of Pepperwood. And he had even selected individual goose pen trees where one could find that by themselves and then congregate together and decide on how to best bring about world peace. Well, um, alas, the World Peace Summit never happened in that grove. However, that grove was sold by the Pacific Lumber Company as part of the Avenue of the Giants tract. Um, Still staying with the Eel River, about a thousand years ago, a little green stem reached up out of the dust of the redwood forest on a steep hillside overlooking the Eel River and grew amongst soaring condors, grizzly bears, pine martin, I mean Humboldt martin, and uh, Pacific martin, Pacific fisher, little splashing fish down in the uh, Eel River variety of life and humans searching for things, probably. So as this tree grew and grew and became a 1,000 years old, it suffered many different climatic changes, including wildfire, lightning strikes, floods, and drought. And then in November of 2000, it was attacked by an angry person with a chainsaw. And if you haven't guessed what I'm talking about, it's the tree named Luna. Uh, Luna so um, named by some of the uh, next generations of forest activists, um, was made famous, internationally famous, world famous by Julia Butterfly Hill, who stayed up in her branches for two years and was on her cell phone all the time. <laughs> um, so Luna had been protected, and Julia Butterfly had come down. In fact, there were three acres of a zone protected around Luna, thanks to the efforts of the Pacific Lumber Company and Luna and Julie Butterfly negotiating and a bunch of different forces that came together. But in the middle of the night, some angry person came and literally with a 36-inch bar cut into Luna. 60% uh, of her was completely cut. But as you can imagine, Luna was on this steep slope, so when he started cutting, 
at the top of the steep slope, and he and he was going around. He was going around on tippy toe, and then he had to go around the other way on tippy toe, and he couldn't make the two ends meet because there was this giant goose pen. He couldn't even carve steps into it to finish the job. But at that point, 60% of Luna was sawed through, and he figured it was just going to topple. And it probably would have if it hadn't been for somebody finding Luna that way. So the um, call went out, and all these people gathered around Luna to try and figure out, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? Only 10% of her cambium was left intact because of the two fire scars on either end. Um, so the, I'm not going to be able to mention them all, and some of you are in the audience. Um, there was an engineer from Arcata, there was a canopy researcher from Arcata, there were canopy specialists from South America, of course Julia Butterfly came, Sanctuary Forest, and uh, Pacific Lumber Company employees, and uh, Arborist from Berkeley who actually helped really plan out the whole um, design of the structures that would keep Luna alive. But wait a minute, I thought, uh, excuse me here, but I'm going to take some storyteller um, license. I needed to go interview the source, and that was to go and interview Luna herself. And excuse me, I know Sequoia and Provirons are both male and female, but I'm going to call her a her right now. So I went to go interview Luna, um, and I was able to walk with Stuart Moskowitz, who was a back there in the, um, next to that window back there, who is the caretaker of Luna. And I... Uh, this is what she told me in response to my many questions. Welcome. Yeah, you can hug me. Go right ahead. Everybody does. Oh, yes, I have survived so much. Life is wondrous. Um, yeah, you can call me Luna, but I'm so much more. I am breath and hope. I am smoke and love. I am spongy life juice and fire scar. I receive and reflect. I am red, green, black, and shimmery. I reach my greenness up, 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 up to the tops where I can reach as tall as I can and that my roots go down into the dark and into the connecting species of my friends. I receive and reflect. I am Fog's partner in the dance of mystery. Yes, I am peace. We are all connected. Pass it on. Oh yeah, you can hug me again. <sighs> it was just a blip of time after Julia came down that the angry one came and tried to knock me over and it hurt. Hell, it hurt. But then there was all these humans that were gathering around me, and um, it was weird and wonderful. I survive now because of uh, steel contraptions. I used to be all natural, and now I understand the Disability Act. <laughs> yes, you can hug me again. Well, as you can tell, I could not keep my hands off of her. And... So I, I, I decided I needed to tell this story. And I went down, and as I'm floating down the hill, I realized I had, like, redwood needles stuck in my hair, and I had the sit from inside the goose pen on my arms. You see, inside her goose pen, there's all these little power objects, little pieces of hair and fur and teeth and bone and shells that people felt like they needed to leave her. And as I made my way down, I felt like a gong had sounded inside my rib cage. And, well, it wasn't just because of Luna. It was because of the humanity involved. So as you can imagine, Luna now has these steel bolts that are about three feet long that are bolted into either side of this kerf, um, five of them. And then uh, about 100 feet up, there's a steel collar that has four cables connected to it. And that was to keep her upright in the wind. And three of the cables are attached to uh, nearby trees. 
the trees that she actually helped protect through the conservation easement. And those trees have rods that go straight through the, hunk, the heart trunk of them, holding up Luna and, and tighten down. And then the fourth cable is, goes to a rod that goes 27 feet into the earth. So literally the earth and the trees are holding her up again. There was still this matter of the space that the chainsaw left, the kerf, and so a medicine man was consulted, and basically uh, he said that she needed clay and bear saliva. Bear saliva. <laughs> and this is part, I kid you not, when, when you put it out there and the, the universe answers, up steps Rosemary the Bear from Sequoia Park Zoo. She happened to be enlisted to be the donor of the bear saliva. <laughs> and I guess with her loose lips, it wasn't that hard. Her zookeepers got her around and corralled and treats, treats, and blah, 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 you know. So that bear saliva was mixed with clay and some other things like the Luna Essence that was collected while in the canopy of the tree by Julia herself and some other saliva I heard was thrown in and anyways mix 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 smashed in there and and uh, applied generously over the years so 16 years later this tree survives and honestly I can still hear her down the highway I am peace pass it on I survived through these contractions, these humans. I will die, so will you. We are all connected. <laughs> Love survives. So like Martella Cone Lane and Don McClellan, I believe in the spiritual ability of um, transmission and the peaceful transmission that you can get in an ancient redwood forest. So may you all continue to receive the blessings of the ancient redwood forest and may we never falter in our uh, dedication to nurture their well-being and I really want to thank all the redwood scientists and all the people who work in the woods and all the people who keep forests going whether they're working or ancient because this is really an amazing species and uh, thank you so much.